Welcome to Face the Analyst. I'm Jay Taylor, your host, and I'm pleased to be with Glenn Mullen. He's the chairman, CEO, and president of uh, Golden Valley Minerals, um, or Golden Valley Mines, I should say. Uh, Golden Valley Mines trades on the Toronto Exchange under GZZ is the symbol. About 63 or 64 million shares outstanding, and last time, about uh, last trade I saw was around 32 cents. Welcome, Glenn, to, to Thank you. Uh, Face the Analyst. Uh, your company is, uh, follows a project generator model, which I think is the best model in the business because it reduces the dilution. Uh, you know, most of these mining companies have to go out and raise capital, con constantly have to go back and sell more shares to put more holes in the ground. The project generator model, could you just spend a minute to tell our, our viewers what that is? Sure. Well, Golden Valley, I really like to describe it as the public version of what a prospector does. And that's probably because most of the um, founders are prospectors and acted independently for decades before Golden Valley actually went public. Um, but as you've said, one of the things we try to do is prevent dilution to ensure the integrity of our share capital structure. We've had approximately 60 to 64 million shares issued outstanding going back more than four years now. And during that period of time, we've actually spent more than $20 million. And the way that we've done that is by leveraging into transactions, joint ventures. Golden Valley typically spends $100,000 on a property. That pays for the research, the staking, the geophysics, the prospecting, the sampling, and it also pays for the first three to five drill holes. So we do take a chance ourselves and try to find the big one, roll the dice. We're looking for a Kerr mine, we're looking for a, uh, a dome mine, we're looking for a Sigma mine, gold, base metals. Um, all of those were found by traditional boot and hammer prospecting in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. And that's really a model that we're trying to, to pursue ourselves. But at the same time, what usually happens is you find good geology, but not a deposit. And we try to leverage those good geological opportunities into joint ventures. And we have what we think are some of the best partners in the business. Uh, to name a few, Osisco Mining Corp, one of our partners on a Malartic gold property. Norant, uh, a junior nickel explorer in the McFolds Lake area. Uh, Lexam, a company controlled by Robert McEwen from Toronto. Those are three of our joint right. venture partners. Right. And we have a multitude of joint ventures that have all been created using the um, drill em and kill em prospector model that really is the catalyst. Right, I think I'd maybe like to clarify something. You said you spent $20 million or something like that over the last period of time. That wasn't really Golden Valley's money, that was joint venture money that came in to the exactly. projects, is that right? But right. that's why our share capital didn't change exactly. during that period of time. Exactly. We survived a financial crisis. Right. We had approximately $4 million in cash during that entire period of time. It never went below $4 million. And we had $20 million spent by our partners during that same period of time. So that created a lot of news flow and some good discoveries fortuitously. You have, um, how many properties do you have in your, in your portfolio? 157 actually, so that's uh, the current number. Each one being mutually exclusive. We don't describe uh, 10 properties as no. you know, a group. A group is one, uh, but 157 different standalone properties of which in any given year, we're working on about 30 at once. Okay, so how do you keep track of all those and how do you prioritize? Computers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Computers no, help. We have a full-time landsman and uh, yeah. obviously a, um, an exploration department consisting of a VP exploration and three geologists, full-time prospector, a couple of field people that are always at work on the ground in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. Um, at any given time, we're working on three or four properties simultaneously. And it's very simple to do in an area like this. There's good infrastructure, good roads, um, these are supportive um, governments. The yeah. municipality is very supportive in Val d'Or, in Rouen, Naranda, Kirkland Lake, Timmins, Ontario, very similar in Ontario. Um, very easy access for most of these properties. So typically we're doing the setup on several groups, um, staking, uh, line cutting, geophysical surveys, geochemistry if needed, sampling, while we're drilling on another one that's just finished the process. So it leapfrogs. It's systematic, it begins after Christmas and it continues 12 months and 12. So you're using your intellectual capital, as it were, your, uh, the early exploration work, the lower cost part of it to define a geological target that looks really good and then bring in somebody else to do the, the high risk drilling and that's, that's the model essentially. But only after we've done the initial drilling ourselves. We're oh, asking okay. our shareholders to take the chance that okay. the highest risk 
and the biggest reward come from being in early on a discovery. So at the time that we stake it and drill the first three to five holes, we own 100% of the property. And that's the risk. And usually what happens is you find good geology, good enough to leverage into a joint venture, and the partner then spends X million dollars. We spend 100 grand, they spend several million. It's a good model for us. So the Perestroika is a project, a, a property that I, that's caught my attention recently because you've had, I guess that's an example where you do the first couple of drill holes yourself and that, those numbers come out pretty good. Are you looking then for a joint venture partner to come into the Perestroika and start putting some serious money into that property? Right, well that's one that's a little bit different given that that's one we earned an interest in. Oh, okay. Now that was a property that's actually owned by Kalahari Resources. Oh, okay. And Kalahari allowed us to earn up to 70% interest and we have done that, so we're a 70% owner vested now. Um, but that was one that we really liked the geology of. It's astride a branch of the Destor Porcupine Fault very prolific structure. In Ontario alone, the Destore Porcupine has had 64 million ounces in gold production from mines associated with it. In Quebec, it's covered by, for the better part of the geography, covered by swamps, muskeg. Right. Harder to define, harder to follow. Um, we were convinced that it underlay part of this property, and it's taken a while with geophysical surveys to find areas of interest, but the last drill holes were quite successful, as you mentioned. There right. were several zones. Um, containing some spectacular values. Very nice values. It certainly caught my eye. And uh, well, how far do you take these properties then, Glenn? If uh, just basically, I mean, when do you hand them off? Uh, Typically, after spending just about a hundred thousand um, dollars, and a hundred thousand is usually enough on a relatively small property to do the early stage work, the geophysics, the prospecting, the sampling, and the drilling of the first three to five holes. You know, in Val d'Or. And actually, I should have mentioned Golden Valley is actually named after the town of Aldor. Sure. It's the okay. English translation. Um, Golden Valley, you know, we, we leverage into these opportunities because $100,000 is enough to pay for up to six drill holes. We have the lowest costs in Canada in and around Valdor because the drilling companies are based here. Most of the exploration people are based here. Um, the assay labs are located in and around Valdor and the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. You can do a lot for $100,000 here that you couldn't even contemplate in northern Canada mm -hmm. or for that matter in most other provinces. Um, because of that infrastructure it creates certain opportunities in its own right. Like the mines office in Valdor, the Ministère de Ressources Naturelles, um, there's a, a huge resource that's available funded mostly by the Quebec government and available to junior explorers. Do you have, uh, with, with so many properties, how is an investor supposed to, or, or let me put, let me phrase it this way, what, do you have some properties that you think investors should be focused on as the most likely ones to catapult your company into a, a household name? Well, I think it's management's job to basically keep investors focused on what we think are the, the properties that offer the best near-term potential. There's two ways that we do that. One of them is we do fund work on our own properties ourselves, the ones we own 100% of and we leverage into joint ventures. The joint ventures, to name one, Osisco Mining Corp, who have earned a 70% interest in one of Golden Valley's properties. They had to spend two million to earn their 70%. They've spent four million. So the fact that they've doubled what they were required to do should be a good indication to investors that there is good potential on that one property. In addition to that, Golden Valley retained um, cash, Golden Valley retained um, NSRs, royalties, etc., and were carried to production in that property. This is quite unique in not just the junior resource sector, but in the mining industry, to actually be able to obtain a carried interest. So in that one gold property, located astride the highway that you came in on from the airport, um, we have a 30% uh, carried interest, right to production. So they've spent $4 million to date, and they're still spending money. They're still drilling with multiple rigs. We expect by year-end that they should be in a position to announce a resource on that property, mm -hmm. leaving Golden Valley with a 30% carried interest. This is really a great position for a junior company to be in. What is the name of that property, Glenn? Malartic CHL Prospect. Okay, so that's one that, that the viewers should keep their eyes on. My subscribers should watch very carefully for some news drill results coming out of a Cisco and yourselves. So. And there's already been four zones defined with work that's been done over the past two years by Cisco. The Jeffrey zone being the one that looks like it has the best near-term promise. 
the Nori Zone, which was known historically and partly mined in the 1960s from underground, um, the Shaft Zone, and the Mammoth Zone, all outlined and work done over the past 24 months. Is there a resource there yet, or is that still to be calculated? No, that's being calculated by OSISCO based oh. on current work that's oh, still ongoing right now. Very good.